Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, case number 43. Here we have an axial T1 and an axial T2 fat sat image through the elbow. And just as orientation, here we have the humeral condyle here. Here we have the olecranon. This muscle here is the brachialis. We have the brachial neurovascular bundle. This here is a cubital tunnel, right? And on the axial T2 fat sat image, we have the same thing. We have an abnormality seen here. And the question that I have for everyone is, what's the most likely cause of the pathology shown? Is this due to infection, overuse, metabolic, or an accessory muscle? And I wanna just come back and draw your attention to the cubital tunnel here, right? So the ulnar nerve sits right here in the cubital tunnel. And normally on the other side, we have this muscle here, which is known as the anconius. This is the anconius muscle right here, and we can see it right here. And on the T2 fat side, we have T2 bright hyperintense signal within the ulnar nerve that may be suggestive of ulnar neuritis. But more importantly, there should be no muscle in the cubital tunnel, and yet we have an accessory muscle here. This is known as the anconius epitrochlearis, which can be you know, an incidental finding, or it can result in impingement of the nerve, result in ulnar neuritis, as in this case, and it can be clinically significant because it results in ulnar neuritis. So this is a nice example of an accessory muscle known as the anconius epitrochlearis resulting in ulnar neuritis and cubital tunnel syndrome. So the correct answer here is an accessory muscle known as the anconius epitrochlearis resulting in ulnar nerve impingement and ulnar neuritis. So cubital tunnel syndrome is compression of the ulnar nerve at the cubital tunnel. I think it's important to understand the anatomy of the cubital tunnel. The roof is made up of the Osborne ligament, which is a fascial thickening between the uh, medial epicondyle and the olecranon. Also the arcuate ligament, which is a ligament that runs between the humeral and ulnar heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle, right? The floor is made up of the elbow joint capsule and the olecranon right here. So this is the space here that we're talking about, the cubital tunnel. It typically presents with medial elbow pain or paresthesias or pain in the ulnar first one or one and a half digits. So pretty much the pinky and the ulnar half of the ring finger. Typically you can have you know, pain or paresthesias because that's what the ulnar nerve innervates. And the key to this diagnosis is looking for a space occupying lesion, either like a mass, a ganglion cyst, an osteophyte, hematoma from trauma, or an accessory muscle, as in this case, an anconius epitrochlearis that's impinging the nerve that's resulting in, you know, enlargement or bright signal within the ulnar nerve. On imaging, you're looking for a T2 bright or hyperintense signal in the nerve itself or enlargement of the nerve. And, you know, there's no real measurements, but some people have said if it measures more than 10 millimeters uh, squared cross-sectional, that's suggestive of ulnar neuritis or cubital tunnel syndrome. Some have said that, well, if the nerve caliber or size changes more than one to two millimeters, right before the cubital tunnel and in the cubital tunnel or in the cubital tunnel and right after the cubital tunnel. And that's suggestive of cubital tunnel syndrome or ulnar neuritis. So there is a wide range of, you know, diagnostic possibilities for diagnosing cubital tunnel syndrome, but typically it's going to be enlarged compared to, you know, the radial nerve or the median nerve, and there will be bright signal. It'll look brighter than the other nerves in the other neurovascular bundles about the elbow. I think that's a nice clue or a nice way to kind of look at it. This can, of course, be associated with ulnar nerve instability and subluxation. Now, obviously, in 10 to 15 percent of patients, people have ulnar nerve instability or subluxation at baseline. So some people have it without having cubital tunnel syndrome. But this, if you have it, it can be associated with, you know, subluxation of the nerve, particularly with flexion when you do flexion. There's also something called triceps snapping triceps syndrome, where not only does the ulnar nerve sublux during flexion, but the medial head of the triceps also subluxes with with flexion, and that can be seen very well on an ultrasound, on a dynamic ultrasound examination of the elbow. The treatment for this is usually conservative. We don't really get bogged down for treating this aggressively. Uh, typically, this is treated very conservatively. So a nice example of cubital tunnel syndrome, always look at the cubital tunnel, always look to see if there's an accessory muscle that's impinging the nerve. Uh, this is a very common cause for doing an MRI of the elbow to assess for cubital tunnel syndrome. Thank you so much for your attention. Tune in next week for another high-yield MSK unknown case.